Good morning, everyone. It is rainy and soggy, and uh, I am happy I was not one of the runners out doing the flying pig this morning. Uh, believe it or not, I actually did it 24 years ago, because uh, I did the, what would be the 26th anniversary. So I did it the second year they had it. Uh, back in my youth, I did three marathons, and uh, then I had kids, and then, well, <laughs> it is what it is. So uh, Jim is back with us today, and he his first few weeks or month, he's allowed to eat whatever he wants, biscuits and gravy and all of that, and so just to support Jim, I've decided to join him on that. <laughs> but uh, no, it's good to have you, Jim, with us. Uh, on that. So we have a whole bunch of announcements. Uh, today is an abbreviated service. Uh, we are going to celebrate Holy Communion. Uh, that'll be our focus today, uh, but we will have a, a, a meeting uh, for the church following that. If it is something that you do not want to participate in, you are welcome to leave at the conclusion of the service. Um, if it's something that uh, you're interested in, we're encouraging you to stay. Uh, for that business meeting, uh, and we'll say more about that later. So uh, Jeannie DeMoss is our liturgist today, and she will give us our, the rest of our announcements. Good morning. If you have any uh, joys or concerns, please send them to Pastor Scott via email or text, or you can call Helen Henley, and her number is in the bulletin. Bible study with Pastor Scott, Second uh, Chance at Revelation, uh, or you can get it online, and that link is in the bulletin also. Wednesday night community prayer is at 7 p.m. every week. Cards are in the narthex if you need one. Craft Ministry meets on Tuesday, 10 to noon. Come if you can, just to visit if you want to, but if you have any talent, they'd appreciate it. Uh, Sunday, May the 21st, is our fellowship lunch and quilt day celebration. So start planning your menus to bring a, something good to eat and celebrate quilt day. That quilt is being donated to us that day. It's an old, old quilt. The altar flowers today are for the birthdays of Paul and Ron Henkel. Happy birthday, Paul and Ron. Happy birthday, Paul. Can we sing happy birthday later to you? All right, we'll sing, we'll sing later for you. We'll... All right. Are there any other announcements uh, for the good of the church? All right, we'll do it. We'll do that for you, Paul. We'll do that during Joys and Concerns, all right? We'll, we'll do that for you. All right, are there any other announcements for the good of the church? All right, with that, if you would, let us stand and join in our call to worship, and then we'll sing our opening hymn number 64, Holy, Holy, Holy. O oh Lord God Almighty, you are holy. We stand, we stand today, today and, and sing, sing praises, praises to you. O holy God, you are both merciful and mighty. Your, Your presence, presence is found in the three persons of our blessed Trinity. Let us join the saints of old and praise your holy name. For, For you, you are, are the beginning and the end, our God for eternity. Now we'll have our opening hymn, number 64. Verses 1, 2, and 4.
us take this time to pass the peace of Christ.
So we come to a time of our joys and concerns. Um, we are blessed to have uh, Danny's sister um, with us today. John is visiting us today, Mr. Mendenhall, and Jim is here today, back from his triple bypass surgery. And uh, if you want to hug him, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> so it, Jim, Jim uh, is very grateful for uh, the prayers and support um, and uh, of this church. So, so thank you for for loving Jim uh, through this. So. Uh, and of course, prayers for Mary because she can't pick on him anymore. Uh, he can do the dishes, right? He can do the dishes. So uh, that's part of his physical therapy. Was it seven? I, I think I need heart surgery. <laughs> Billy Faint. So that is great. And of course, we want to celebrate uh, Ron and Paul's birthday. So we will sing happy birthday to Paul. And then if you want to open your hymnals, if you don't know the words, 378, we'll sing the first verse of Amazing Grace. So first of all, let's sing, sing happy birthday to Paul. Ready? Happy birthday to you. Share, Danny. I've got a couple. Uh, go asking for prayers for the family of uh, the Kazakas, and then uh, this week is going to be a tough week, also because Brad Hangold's funeral is this coming Saturday. And then I have uh, another prayer that I'm going to ask for. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I asked for prayers for Whitney, who lives down in Florida, and I just wanted to say thank you for the continued prayers for Whitney and her family in Florida as she continues to battle with cancer. And of course, in Jesus' name, we all pray for that and pray for healing. So, amen. And so, continue prayers for uh, Danny's friend Whitney down in Florida who's battling cancer. Uh, Tammy. Keep the Cole family in their prayers. Uh, Ann Case passed away this weekend. So, the Cole family as Ann Case has passed away. So the Cole family and Ann Case. That's the same one. Yeah. Right, but I'm just Ann yeah. Case passed away, but the prayers are for the family, the Cole family as well. I'm just trying to get my notes so I can. That's a sweet lady that's in heaven right now. So. Uh, Ruth. Allie's what? When, when Allie goes back to school in the fall, she's been selected to do her fall semester in Washington, D.C. Oh, wow. So Allie, who's been going to OU, has been had a special selection to do a semester in Washington, D.C. Yeah. So. She's going to be a block away from Capitol Hill. I don't know if that's good <laughs> <laughs> For him or for her, because <laughs> if Allie gets something on her mind, she might go tell her. Other 
prayers. Yes. I believe that Donna McMillan is here in church today. Yes. 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 yes, Danny's sister Donna is here, so it is great to have Yes, it is great to have her with us. Yes, and Sandy. Yes, I like Joyce. Thank you for Paul. That's one joy. Um, and I talked to um, Shirley Govich this week. She is living with her daughter in Westchester. Um, she has dementia, but she's doing well. And she tells everybody that she misses them down here. And the second joy is that uh, Kim has been stopping by on Tuesdays with her mom, Ruth. And that's such a blessing to see them come. Um, we also need prayers. Kim has Bell's palsy. So, but uh, Ruth is, seems to be doing really well. Oh, good. So Kim has been able to get Ruth out and come to the craft ministry group on Tuesdays, which has been a blessing. And uh, prayers for Kim, who's been diagnosed with Bell's palsy. Any other joys and concerns to share this morning? All right, let us be in a time of prayer uh, together, please. Wonderful and gracious God, um, we live in a world of turmoil. Lord, we live in a world of sickness and pain and darkness and evil. And Lord, uh, we need your hand of, of intervention in so many ways. But Lord, uh, we ask that uh, through our prayers that you strengthen us and you give us wisdom and knowledge to be that source of intervention. Allow us to be a source of joy. Allow us to be a source of peace and hope. Allow us to share our faith and the victory that comes with it. Lord, let us be a light unto this dark world. Lord, uh, today we send to you our many great joys and many ways that you have blessed us. We thank you for the presence of family and friends here today. Lord, uh, we just thank you for the, the faithfulness of this church to continue to grow and mature in a, a incredible spiritual ways. Lord, we thank you for uh, the, the gift of ministry in our church and, and what it has meant to so many people. Uh, and Lord, uh, and, and our, our call to prayer, Lord, we lift up uh, so many of our friends and family members who have suffered loss, who are enduring difficult times. Lord, it is difficult for us to watch our loved ones uh, fade away to horrible diseases. Uh, but Lord, allow us to continue to show love and compassion and allow us to continue to share uh, what it means to have salvation in Jesus Christ. Because those who love you and those who have been marked by your seal are the ones who will receive the eternal promise. And Lord, let us be about your business of going and making disciples. Lord, let us uh, follow Jesus and all of his teachings, including this prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now for the reading of God's word. Our scriptures this morning are taken from Exodus channel, <laughs> chapter 12 and 1 Corinthians chapter 11. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, this month is to be your first month, the first month of your year. Tell the whole community of Israel that on the 10th day of this month, each day, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household. If any household is too small for a whole lamb, they must share one with their nearest neighbor haven't taken into account the number of people there are. You are to determine the amount of lamb needed in accordance with what each person will eat. The animals you choose must be a year old males without defect, and you may take them from sheep or the goats. Take care of them until the 14th day of the month, when all the members of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the houses where they eat the lambs. 
That same night, they are to eat the meat roasted over the fire, along with bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. Do not eat the meat raw or boiled in water, but roast it over a fire with the head, legs, and internal organs. Do not leave any of it till morning. If some is left till morning, you must burn it. This is how you are to eat it, with your cloak tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. On that same night, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn of both people and animals, and I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. This is the day you are to commemorate for the generations to come. You shall celebrate it as a festival of the Lord, a lasting ordinance. And from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 23 through 32, for I have received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ eat and drink judgment on themselves. That is why among you, many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. But if we were more discerning with regard to ourselves, we would not come under judgment. Nevertheless, we aren't judged in this way by the Lord. We are being disciplined so that we will not be finally condemned with the word, world. The word, of, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would the ushers please come forward for the morning offering?
Almighty creator of the world, giver of grace, we come to you today to worship and honor you. We've brought to you our presence. We brought to you our hearts. We brought to you our love. And Lord, today we express our love in the giving of these tithes and offerings. Lord, we are committed to you and committed to this church. And Lord, we ask that you bless these offerings so that we may continue to be the church that you have called us to be. May we be truly be fruitful in the way that we use these. Uh, may we use these resources in such a way that others can come to know Jesus Christ and they too can share in the victory that we have as you create your final kingdom. All of this we ask and pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, in your bulletins, you should have a handout, and then I believe the worship team also has it up on the screen. Uh, we will be following our standard uh, liturgy for the word. Christ our Lord invites to the table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Join with me. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us take a moment of silence to confess our personal sins. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us and in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image. You breathed into us the breath of life. And when we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you. 
broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Communion in the United Methodist Church is open to all who want to renounce their sin and receive the grace of Jesus Christ. Today we're going to receive communion a little bit differently. Carla's going to join me up here. Those who are able will ask you to come forward. If you're unable, and we will bring the elements to you. But we're going to allow you to have some time if you so desire. We'll, you'll come up and uh, you'll take a cup and you'll take a piece of bread and you're welcome to come to the altar or sit in the front pew uh, and take some time for prayer, reflection, uh, and, and, and um, uh, just be in union with God as you partake of the elements. And if you wish to just take them and go back to your seat, you're welcome to do that as well. But just consume them when you're ready to consume them. So you'll have some opportunity to do that. So Carla, if you will come join me uh, uh, for this. Uh, the, the table has been set. The table is open. Please come and receive.
Let us stand now for our closing hymn, number 365, Grace, Grace, Greater Than Our Sin. As we wrap up the worship part of our service, we need to remember God's grace. God's grace that was given for all people of all time. God's grace that redeems all sinners. God's grace that loves all people. God's grace that desires all people to be in a right relationship with him. And without that right relationship, we cannot spend eternity with God. But by His grace, and by the work that Jesus Christ did for us on the cross, by giving His body, and by the shedding of His blood, we all have the opportunity to receive God's grace. May we be a people that not only receive God's grace, but a people that live out God's grace. And may we be ever mindful of God's desire for us to be a holy and righteous people. May we leave here under the blessing of God in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now this concludes our worship service. Uh, if you do not desire to be part of the business, part of the meeting of the church, you are welcome and free to leave. Those of you who are staying, if you want to go ahead and be seated, um, I have a few words to say, and then I will pray. Uh, and then as a part of that meeting, uh, because this is a lay-driven moment and movement, it'll be lay